This is an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on working with still images in Adobe Premiere Pro. Hi, my name is Larry Jordan. Still photographs, slides, and digital images are a common component of many video projects today. In this short video, I'll show you how to animate their movement, including movement on curves, inside Adobe Premiere Pro. This is Premiere. I'm working with the latest version, but this will work with just about every version of Premiere that's ever been done. Command I to import an image, and we'll start with Milford. That'll work. So let's add this image to the timeline, and notice that when we do, it shows up just as we expect, and it fits the frame. I've turned safe zones on just so you can easily see where the frame is. But the problem is, the default setting inside Premiere works against you when you're working with still images. If I go up to Effect Controls, notice that the scale is set to 100%, which means this image is as large as it can be without getting blurry. But the problem is it isn't. This image is larger than the sequence. Instead, right mouse click or control click on the still and change it from scale to frame size, which we don't want, to set to frame size, which we do want. When we set it to frame size, notice that now it says we had to reduce the size of this image to 27% of actual size to get it to fit. This is critical because if I enlarge an image more than 100%, it's going to get blurry, which means I need to know where the actual 100% is, and scaling to frame size masks that, which means I'm totally on my own and could totally screw this up without even knowing it. This is such an important setting that if you go up to Premiere Pro, go to Settings, go to Media here, change the default media scaling from the default of scale to frame size to set to frame size. But it makes a huge difference when you're dealing with stills. Let's import another picture. And we're going to import a waterfall. And we'll edit that to the timeline. I'll just drag it in rather than type period. And there's the waterfall. And notice it's been scaled to 17%. That's what the benefit of set to frame size. I'm going to have this run, let's command R, let's have this run 8 seconds. I'm going to have it start here and end here. So what do I want to do for start? I want to tilt up the waterfall. I want to follow the reverse flow of the water. So I'm going to set a keyframe for scale and a keyframe for position and set this scale to, well, that's too high, let's not do Wow, that's 80%. I've got pixels to spare here. This is great. Then select the word motion, drag down to get that lovely pool that the water is in right there. And we see the water falling into the pool. Now we'll position our playhead where we want it to end. And we will select motion. And now we're going to drag up to the very top. And I've got that set right there. Except I want to have the scale increase. Let's go to 100%. Ooh, lovely. We see the water gushing out of the side of the mountain, falling down. All right. So we've got the position set. I've changed the scale. Let's play it and see what happens. Oh, wow. Starts pretty abruptly. and slams into a close, I would like it to not start so abruptly. How do I do that? Well, you control click or right mouse click on the position, because it's changing position, and it opens up a submenu, and time and space. Space automatically has ease in, ease out applied, but temporal is linear, which means it does not have ease in, ease out applied. Let's set it to auto bezier. And now as we do, no, still not good enough. Let's set it to ease out. Ease in is when you approach a keyframe. Ease out is when you leave a keyframe. So let's watch this and notice now how much gentler it is to take off. And now it's growing and growing and growing, getting bigger until it... So we'll click the last one. Control click, temporal, and ease in which is how it approaches the keyframe. Now, it's got that little bit of a bounce. You may decide that what you want instead is to control click and say auto bezier, which gets rid of the bounce. 
It's up to you. And notice that our scale was so subtle, it went from 80 to 100%, and you didn't even notice it getting closer. But I want to do more than that. I want to sort of have a, like a drone flying out of control up the front of the waterfall. So I'm going to set this to 10% and select the clip. You see the blue box? That represents the entire image right there. That's the whole image. And we're seeing just a small piece of it. The blue line represents what's called the motion path. The path, the center of that image follows as it moves from the start up through the top. And you notice this blue circle right here. The blue circle allows me to set position keyframes. So here, I put the playhead where I want a curve to exist, grab that crosshair and drag it, and I've curved one way or curved another. Let's curve this way, and we'll go back to here. And I'm doing it against black just because it's easier to see. We'll curve over this way. If you zoom in on the image, you'll notice that I've got these Bezier control handles, which allow me to change the shape of the curve and holding shift and command and option down allow you to adjust one side versus the other. Let's come back here and let's go fit to window and let's see what kind of trouble we've caused. And we start up and we're swooping off and now we're going to the other side and now, oh my goodness, it's out of control until it ends up with the final image. I'm not saying that you perform a drunken walk up the front of a waterfall, but isn't it cool to know that motion paths don't have to be straight? And the way that you set a keyframe in a motion path, and a motion path is set by keyframes in the position effect, the way you set a keyframe within a motion path is to highlight the clip, put the playhead where you want that keyframe to exist, and then drag that crosshair inside the program monitor until uh, you have it in the position that you want. This was an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar on working with still images inside Adobe Premiere Pro. For the complete version of this online training, please visit my store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 347. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's almost 2,000 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers a variety of software, and we update it multiple times each month. For more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.